Hello, and welcome to Monster Hunter Marriage. My name is Gary. Thank you for being with us today on the channel. Please like and subscribe. It'll really help out the channel, really help out what I'm doing here with my family. We appreciate it in advance. Today we're doing something a little different, something I haven't really done too much of, but have been trying to do for some time now, now that I got my editing skills up just a tad. And that is the top seven Metroidvanias on Nintendo Switch, plus four honorable mentions. And I know I could have easily gone with top 11, but it just didn't feel right. So we're sticking with top seven. Again, thank you for being here with us today. This is a genre that I stumbled onto by complete accident and have been completely avoiding for the past 26 years of my life, unintentionally at that. But it was because I had a mistaken concept. I believed ever since the advent of 3D gaming that 2D gaming was just inferior, uh, cheaper, just subpar, not on the same level especially in the last 15 years with the complete evolution of 3D gaming becoming so much more prominent in the gaming landscape. And I was ignorant and mistaken, and I didn't even come close to playing any games like it until I got a Nintendo Switch last summer in 2021. I was walking out of a game store, had already picked up four games, already bought them, so I'm leaving the store, and I saw or in the world of the wisps on the counter. And then I just happened to decide to go back and check it on the shelf. And it was at a pretty decent price. And I'd seen it on Metacritic with a score of 93%, I believe, and decided, you know what, let me just grab it. I had really no intention of playing. It was just really looking to add to my library just to have a few games there. And it sat on my shelf for a few months. We were on vacation. I Brought my boys home. My wife was sick. She was playing Nintendo Switch. And it was one of the most beautiful games I'd ever seen in my life. Running buttery smooth. At 60 frames per second, I could tell right away just because of how great it looked. Couldn't believe it. My wife had picked it up because she thought Ori was cute. <laughs> so that's how she got into it. And she handed it to me. And it was one of the best games I'd ever played before. It handled so great. Everything was precise. It was amazing. So long story short, my Nintendo Switch is now a Metroidvania machine. I was so ignorant in the past. I'm glad I eventually found it, though. So with that being said, let's jump into the top seven Metroidvanias for Nintendo Switch, plus four honorable mentions. <laughs> Number 11, Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night. Recipient of the highly coveted Monster Hunter Marriage Honorable Mention tag. Well, <laughs> maybe one day. Bloodstained finds itself in this final position on the list due solely to its slight inferiority when compared with itself on stronger consoles. Slight being the key word. What's here is still pretty fantastic. Launching back in 2019, it was originally hampered with inconsistent performance the patches have essentially set things right. It's still not quite perfect in this regard, and it can feel pretty choppy at times on the Switch, but overall, I still really enjoyed my time with this one. The setting, story, overall mood just mixes great with this style of game, and it really feels like a throwback to the days of Castlevania, something that the developer, Koji Igarashi, was not shy about wearing on his sleeve, as he was a producer and assistant director for the original Castlevania series. I probably just butchered his name, please forgive me Koji. A mini RPG with a Metroidvania coat of paint. The atmosphere is purely gothic with a more than mild horror aesthetic. Despite finding itself at the bottom of my list, it is still very much worth your time, especially if you're a fan of this genre. Number 10, Salt and Sanctuary. So this game is basically Dark Souls based on every review I've ever seen of it. So I guess we could stop right there, huh? After playing this melancholy tale for myself, I understand why it's so often associated with Dark Souls, but the game has so much more going for it than just being a 2D carbon copy. Salt and Sanctuary is honestly an incredible action slash RPG slash Metroidvania game. 
So much so that I couldn't believe I was placing it in the honorable mention category. I did believe it though, because I'm the one who did it. The art style and character animations may seem familiar in 2022, but when this game first came out in 2016, it was something unique and very awesome to behold. And quite honestly, it actually still is. If I had to describe this game with just one word, that word would be raunchy, but since there's no lewd content in the game, I'm gonna go with raw. Just like any Souls-like or proper Metroidvania, Salt and Sanctuary is undoubtedly difficult. But with a little patience and persistence, anything that's a little too hard at first can eventually be overcome. If you find the damp, depressing atmosphere even the slightest bit enticing, you'll have no issues repeatedly trying to best its incredible but challenging boss fights over and over again until you ultimately succeed. Number 9. Blasphemous the first game we're discussing here that uses an old retro art style definitely won't be the last one. It pulls this off masterfully. Blasphemous is probably the filthiest, grimiest, dirtiest, and most gory game I cover on this list. The audio is crisp, at the same time squelchy. I honestly can't think of a better word to describe it. The game is definitely tough, but you just stick that sword in the wall and hang tough. Studying your opponent's movesets will ultimately pay off. Blasphemous is brutal, but like with the best games in the genre, it's completely fair, and any shortcomings or gory death can almost always be attributed to your poor decision making. So watch out. Blasphemous has a very deliberate and heavy feel to its action. Moves aren't necessarily swift, in fact, they aren't swift at all, and require excellent timing and patience to truly master it. That being said, once you get the hang of it, few games provide the kind of rush that Blasphemous does when having its combat down pat. Each strike made with your sword truly feels like you just sliced through something. And for some strange reason, that's extremely satisfying. For those of you who love pixel art, gory combat, and really precise platforming, Blasphemous will hold a special place in your heart. Just remember that if you're the type that passes out at the sight of blood, You've got a long game ahead of you. Number 8. Dead Cells Ever-changing but always satisfying, Dead Cells reign supreme at the top of my roguelite list. Sharing the top and only spot with Hades. And, and maybe Returnal. Yeah, definitely Returnal. Returnal's in there too. Not typically one for gluttonous punishment, I think the key to unlocking the joy of Dead Cells is pure determination. Beginning anew after each and every death, upgrades can become permanent eventually with enough effort. And though the environments change and enemy placement is altered before each fresh attempt, the combat and movement is so precise, you always have a chance to succeed. This also has an amazing pixel art style and is perfectly executed. I do not believe this game has a true competitor in this era of metroidvanias and roguelites. Check this one out and tell me if you have ever played a game with smoother animations. All right, we've done it. We've made it to the main event, the top seven metroidvanias on Nintendo Switch. And I think it's kind of cheap to call it that. Castlevania came out a month and a half after Metroid in 1986, and it wasn't even a metroidvania the first game. That didn't happen until Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, about a year later. So really, they should just be called Metroid Likes, or Metroid Light, I guess? But whatever, good for Castlevania, weaseling its way into the title there. Number 7, Vigil, The Longest Night. Coming in hot at number 7, Vigil, The Longest Night is basically a quasi-sequel to Salt and Sanctuary that we never received. On Nintendo Switch, at least. PS5 and PS4 just got salt and sacrifice, so there is a sequel, you just can't do it on Switch. Vigil is disgusting in all the right ways. A dimly lit environment, perpetually stuck at the hour of dusk, grotesque monsters and enemies litter its fairy tale, medieval world, and the remaining populace is downtrodden and distressed. Speaking of the environments, this land is perpetually encased in the shadows of the night, 
which the title probably gave away, but the light from the full moon provides an eerie glow, giving just enough light to navigate the world, but it's not enough to ever feel comfortable. Most of the NPCs you meet have the inclination to avoid this outside world, and for good reason. But our hero, Leela, takes the opposite approach. She's the last member of the vigil, venturing forth to end this long night while also investigating the disappearance of her sister, who conveniently goes missing just before we return to town. The soundtrack perfectly matches the striking visuals, expressing a strangely cheerful tone mixed with depression. It's definitely paradoxical, but it works. The music actually really reminds me of Fable and Medieval. Medieval? Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. The old PlayStation classic. The lack of voiceover work probably will turn off some, but it actually never bothered me. All in all, Vigil will last you anywhere from 12 to 20 hours, especially on your first go, and if you're taking some time out to look for its secrets. Mix all of this with a modest price tag of just around 20 bucks, no fan of the genre should dismiss this chilling but enchanting stroll through the darkness. Number 6, Death's Gambit, Afterlife. A redemption story for the ages, or for this list. Death's Gambit, the number 6 game on my list, originally released back in 2018 and in a pretty sad state. It was played by lovely issues including freezing on startup, confidence-inducing crashes, and a bevy of bugs including, but not limited to, activated abilities playing a gorgeous animation just without the ability. You know, essentially a ton of great features combining together to make a different kind of experience. But the story does not end there, not even close. The game's developer, White Rabbit, went back to the pixel drawing board and returned with a vengeance launching Death's Gambit Afterlife a full three years later on Nintendo Switch. And they weren't content with just fixing those pesky bugs, which they did. The developers went ahead and tripled the size of the game. They added a ton of new weapons, changed the original map, and blessed the world with numerous alternate endings. And I'm also keenly aware of the fact that I've hardly discussed the game itself so far. But I firmly believe that when a developer admits its faults, fixes those faults, and goes above and beyond to return with something far superior, they absolutely deserve to be recognized and appreciated. Introspection to this extent is pretty rare in the game industry and I refuse not to comment on it. Besides, just check out the game footage that's playing right now. You don't need anything else. That's Gambit Afterlife is not only one of the best Metroidvanias on Switch, I personally believe it to be one of the best games on the system, period. Play this game. Number 5. Ender Lilies, Quietus of the Nights. Before replaying all of these games for this video, something my wife truly hated, it was a huge investment of time. My goodness. I made an early draft list of my top 20 or so favorite Switch Metroidvanias, and I made a quicker initial ranking of them and dropped 6 or 7 almost immediately. And there were a few that I knew would be on my list, but that I'd forgotten large amounts about them, so I wasn't quite sure where to place them. Ender Lilies was one of those games, and I initially had it pegged for honorable mention. As soon as I started my second playthrough of the game, I remembered just how awesome this game is, and I knew right away something in the top 5 was getting bumped. Ender Lilies pulls all of my strings. The graphics in our style are one of my favorites in all of gaming, not just on Nintendo Switch. Its boss and monster design seem like something out of a crazy, twisted Tim Burton movie, which I guess is just a regular Tim Burton movie. A similarly inspired dilapidated world and mood that just oozes a sickly fairy tale charm. Is that even a thing? The combat is somewhat unique in its own right, with our hero Lily unable to attack or defend herself, instead relying on spirit guardians that she actually has to rescue from the reign of death that has destroyed and corrupted the kingdom that it appears she's now the last living one in. With the combat comes the gore, and despite Ender Lilies containing a lot of it, the gore still somehow manages to add to the beauty of the game. This gorgeous little Metroidvania's only negative worth pointing out is probably a strange dodge movement. 
it's basically a face plant that I am convinced should be causing damage to your character. Ender Lily's Quietus of the Nights is a must play as far as I'm concerned. It only finds itself with four games ahead of it because of how many truly great Metroidvanias are available on Switch. Number four, Super Metroid. Here we are, a classic one of the greatest and most influential games of all time. Super Metroid is probably the greatest game on this list. So great, in fact, I didn't play it till 2021 after I beat Dread. I placed it at number four solely because it launched like 18 generations ago, which is a slight exaggeration, but it was 1994 and for the SNES. Wearing its alien influence on its padded sleeves, Super Metroid follows a lone female protagonist Samus Aran, what a badass, as she blasts her way through the space pirates and their underground base on the planet Zevas. Responsive controls and precise movement for the time spell challenging but extremely balanced combat that rewards adaptation and preparation. Deadly enemies litter the hallways and caverns that lead to even more dangerous boss encounters. This expansive map fills a player with dread while paradoxically begging to be explored. Its secrets are just waiting to be discovered around every bend. Despite its age, Super Metroid is still a sight to behold, even by today's standards. I was honestly amazed at how well the visuals still hold up when I first played the game, for myself 28 years after its original launch. Besides being one of the greatest games of all time, Super Metroid literally created the outline by which every Metroidvania that has come after has followed and to a T at that. This game's available on Nintendo Switch Online, and Super Metroid is just as worthy of your time today as it was in 1994. Number three, Hollow Knight. Sure to generate its share of controversy. Actually, probably not. We're just a small mom and pop channel. Hollow Knight, a game that took the world by storm back in 2017, and rode that lightning to Switch in the summer of 2018, is my number three greatest Metroidvania on Nintendo's portable console. Cornering the market with a price like a $15, Hollow Knight may deliver the greatest bang for your buck on Switch, providing upwards of 40 hours and potentially much more of premium gameplay and thrilling exploration. Set in the fictional world of Hollow Nest, the artistic design of Hollow Knight is unlike any other game I've seen. Deep blacks and eye-popping whites interjected with the most vibrant of oranges it may sound simple on the surface, or under, <laughs> yeah, it's terrible, but the end result is something wholly unique and hauntingly beautiful. Exact movements become essential the further you progress, both for platforming challenges and its exceptional combat, but the controls and the complete lack of latency issues are more than up to the task. Placing complete trust in the player from the word go prepare to get lost in this world over and over again. The difference between Hollow Knight and other games is that getting lost in this world is actually enjoyable. And it's a good thing it is, because Hollow Knight does not hold your hand and you are absolutely going to get lost in this world. Any game capable of making me think fondly of insects, well, almost, it gets pretty close, is doing something right. And if you find yourself mildly upset about the position that I have it in, think of it this way. If there weren't two better games ahead of it, Hollow Knight will be higher. Number two, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Oftentimes depressing, but equally enchanting, pervaded by rot and decay, but cheerfully radiant and pure, perilous and formidable, but long suffering and resolute. Will of the Wisps world, characters and protagonists strikes such a perfect balance, it's entirely possible to find it beyond reproach. My first true encounter with the Metroidvania, a purchase I made solely in the hopes of getting my wife into gaming and adding to my library, I could not predict the obsession this game would awaken within me. It is perhaps the most influential game pertaining to my adult gaming life. I have no issue crowning Ori and the Will of the Wisps as the most beautiful game of all time. An amazing feat when you consider that it's also running at 60 frames per second on my favorite portable hardware. This game is a huge step up from its predecessor in every way, 
and there's not a single element of the game design that Will of the Wisp does not excel in. Apart from the beautiful design and graphical fidelity, Ori controls like a dream, an extension of your fingertips, dashing and darting about seemingly at the exact moment the thought crosses your mind. Puzzle solving and platforming, while still present in droves, they take a back seat to the new combat system, which is as stunning as it is chaotic with the boss battles and chase sequences being particularly noteworthy. There are few greater experiences in all of Metroidvania gaming, and at the time of recording this, I can think of only one other. Number 1. Metroid Dread We've reached the end of the line, and what a long, strange journey it's been. And with that, I present to you my favorite Metroidvania on Nintendo Switch. To no one's great surprise, definitely not my own, my top choice bears the name of the very genre I am discussing, Metroid Dread. Not only is Metroid Dread the greatest on Switch, I place it as the greatest Metroidvania available on any platform. Wasting little to no time in dropping you into the action, we understand the stakes immediately Sense the isolation with which we must contend, and the titular dread that we must not only confront, but defeat if we're to have any chance of leaving Planet ZDR with our hero intact. Upon our arrival, we come face to face with an enigma, a living ghost of a long thought dead race, and faced with many questions. One is answered for us immediately. This is no friend of ours. Bruised and defeated, Samus Aran begins her journey of uncovering the mystery of this planet, identifying her overpowered assailant and his undefined goals, while praying that she can not only regain the abilities which have been stripped away, but hopefully discover a new strength inside of her that may or may not even exist in this hostile environment. Though daunting, at no time throughout the game's 10 to 15 hour runtime will you ever find it anything less than compelling constantly prying you forward. Certainly difficult, but never overbearing, Metroid Dread contains within it some of the most spectacular combat I've ever seen or experienced, irrespective of 2D or 3D. And let's not forget the absolutely fantastic visuals, some of the best to grace the Nintendo Switch system. Featuring pinpoint animations, gorgeous effect work, and some seriously detailed alien enemies and bosses, it's hard to believe it does all of this at 60 frames per second, but here we are. Saying as little as I possibly can in the hopes of not ruining any surprises, for the three of you that don't know about it yet, Dread also features intense stealth sections and plenty of unscripted chase sequences that up the ante and lead to numerous heart-pounding escapes, and if you're not quick enough, just as many failures. The game always maintains a brisk pace refusing to take you out of the action for too long, and it's all the better for this decision. Despite this, there's still plenty of exploration to experience and dozens of secrets to be discovered, though finding their location is often less than half the battle. Rounding out the package is the replay value, which comes in the form of a hard difficulty, a boss rush mode, and sequence breaks to find everywhere that were expertly crafted and the discovery of which was not only anticipated by the developers, but rewarded. Finishing up the story of the 2D Metroid games dating all the way back to 1986, Metroid Dread is the culmination of a thrilling series and a worthy conclusion to one of the most iconic adventures in all of gaming history. It's an absolute must buy for any Switch owner. There you have it. Those are the top seven Metroidvanias on Nintendo Switch and four honorable mentions. Now, I don't know why I always feel compelled to put my hand up to do that, but whatever. Thank you again for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you here in the future for more Nintendo Switch coverage. Have a great night, guys.